So I'll just keep everything intact like this, bring everything upstairs and put it back together outside. And uh, hopefully it's clear tonight so we can actually test this. Hi everybody, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and in this video we're going to take a look at the ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro color camera. I'm going to get out in the backyard and use it tonight because the forecast actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to be using it here on the Esprit 100 refractor with a new focal reducer and hopefully get some good images with it and I'll, I'll of course share that with you. The ZWO ASI 533 MC Pro, it's a color dedicated astronomy camera. It only comes in color this one, no mono version. It has a square one inch diagonal CMOS sensor, nine megapixels and the pixel size is smaller so that changes the pixel scale from some of the other cameras i've used in the past such as if you've watched this channel the 294 mc pro which i love that has an aps-c size sensor with a different pixel size so slightly different field of view between that camera and this one but you'll see what i mean when i take the pictures the other thing about this camera it's brand new zwo is sending along a duo narrowband filter along with these cameras which is a pretty nice perk uh, the odd thing about this camera in the ZWO lineup is that there are now, as of recording, three cameras, comparable cameras that are all 899 US. The 533, the 294, and the 183 are all 899 and all come in color versions. So I don't know which one you're going to want to choose, especially when they're all kind of close and similar experiences, but we'll see how close once I get it on this telescope. I'm going to put together the entire configuration here in the basement in my studio and uh, get everything the way it should be and then I'm going to haul it back up the stairs into the backyard for tonight. Uh, but just in case you were wondering what's included with the camera, so I mentioned the, uh, the duo narrowband filter. ZWO has told me that they're going to ship those out with the 533 at least for now. Uh, we're at the end of 2019. Uh, I didn't get one, but I do have my Optolong L enhanced, so I'm going to be using my own dual bandpass filter. Thank you very much. But it comes with this cool ZWO case, nice padded case, very similar to the 294, although it's got this little red trim on the zipper, fits nicely in there. It's nice for a camera like this, pretty delicate. You want to have it safely stored when not in use, and you can even slide it on when it's attached to the telescope, and I do that very often. Also in the box is the spacers and extensions that you need uh, to get your back focus. ZWO is really good with that. They have the diagram on their website so you can see what the spacing you need. It comes with the USB 3.0 cable and it comes with some extra adapters. Basically everything you need to get up and running with whatever telescope you're using it with. The other really cool thing about the setup that I'm gonna be doing is that I am using the new Starazona apex reducer and that's a 0.65 reducer and that's going to change the focal length of my esprit 100 to 376 or three around 350 millimeter which is like crazy wide and then it also stops that f ratio that f 5.5 hold on just need to get my calculator 5.5 times 0.65 down to f 3.5 so that is a speedy system and it's supposed to be really flat and sharp stars. I've seen test images using this thing. So extremely excited to be working with Star Arizona on this one and testing out that reducer. I know that a lot of you watching are using one shot color dedicated astronomy cameras like the 294 MC Pro that I've been using for the last two years. And so now you may be looking at the 533 and saying, well, why would I switch to that? And I really don't see any reason that would make sense to, to switch from the 294 to the 533, unless somehow that the, the field of view and the resolution is just 
a better fit for your telescope system. Me, on the other hand, it would be a nice comparison to see between the 294 and 533 because they are so similar. The biggest difference is really this one has amp glow, the 294, although that's never been an issue for me because those just calibrate out with dark frames anyway. So the 533 has zero amp glow. It has smaller pixels, so it's essentially gonna be a higher resolution image. It is a tough decision to choose from if you're going from a DSLR to a dedicated astronomy camera. If you're looking at the 294 and the 533, I think it will come down to what's a better fit in terms of pixel scale for your optical system. If you're not familiar with the pixel scale calculation, it basically goes like this. So on the 533, it's 3.76, and then you divide that by your focal length, which on this telescope is 550, and times that by the magic number of 206. So I'm just opening up the apex reducer now. Uh, right out of the box and I'm going to open up the filter slider and the adapters to see if I can get this configuration sorted out. Cool. Wow, very heavy. So this is a five element reducer. Now this is the L version because this telescope is over 500 millimeters. There's an S version for 500 and under telescopes. Looks like I'm going to need an adapter between the reducer and the filter drawer. Better look at the instructions. Okay, I think I've got this figured out now uh, in the, with the correct backspacing, which for this camera, the 533 is 58 millimeters. So you'll see that the reducer flattener is attached to this M42 adapter and the whole thing sits inside the focuser like that, which is kind of cool. I thought it was gonna be out to here so long but I've got the filter drawer here with and I can slide it in and out proper spot for this two inch Optolong L enhanced filter which I'll be using tonight and I've got my little ruler out here 58 millimeters from the flattener to the sensor on the camera this is going outside now because uh, it's crunch time it's 1 30 in the afternoon uh, but it's really really windy out there so hopefully the wind dies down that seems to be the one element of the weather I always forget to check. I'll see, you know, clear skies, great transparency. But what's the wind like? If you saw my last video talking about the mistakes beginners make, uh, someone pointed out to me on my Facebook page an important one I left out and that is setting up in the daytime. Uh, it seems so silly, right? You could set up lights and um, you could set up at night, of course. It's possible, but there's something about setting up under a clear dark sky that makes you rush everything it's very frantic and it's not very enjoyable as opposed to setting up in the daytime. You can see everything nicely. You're not rushing anything. Chances are you'll notice something that you need to fix, some cabling or something. So setting up in the daytime is a really important lesson that you don't want to learn the hard way. Okay, it is uh, just after midnight, I believe. Orion is up here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not. Uh, it is very cold out here. It's about minus two now. I'm sure you can see the, my breath now. It was one of those nights where I had everything set up in the daytime, uh, really anxious to get started, and then the clouds came in. I was watching the guide camera from inside the house, watching the clouds go by, kept checking on it, checking on it. Still cloudy, still cloudy. Poking my head out the window. Ashley and I got comfortable watching TV in the house, and it's a Friday night, and had some wine, and while well, she had wine, I had some beer and uh, all of a sudden you get cozy in the house and you look outside, it's still cloudy and like, eh, maybe I'll just pack it in for the night. But uh, sure enough, I come out 20 minutes ago and it's crystal clear out here and I couldn't believe how high Orion is in the sky. I've, because we've been clouded out for a month straight, it's really climbed over that month's time. Uh, so now we're in these winter constellations. And uh, so I'm up and running on the Horsehead Nebula with the 533. And I know what you're gonna say that I've shot that so many times before, but 
One, it's a very worthy target. Two, uh, it's a great test subject for this new camera sensor and the apex reducer that I'm using. So I framed it up, it looks so sharp. I'm really excited taking four minute images at unity gain. That's shooting at f3.5, so that should be soaking in a lot more light in four minutes than I'm used to. Oh, look, you can just start to see Sirius popping above uh, my house there, right there. So uh, yeah, things are going really good, really exciting. I love, I, this is what I live for.